Hey, welcome to the QB School. I appreciate the support. Thank you so much for turning in. Got another Q&A right here. We're going to talk zone coverage, talk defensive schemes, talk cover six. If you ever heard of that, a little quarter, quarter, half. I'm excited. Welcome to the QB School. All right, next set of questions here. Cormel, I love calling smashes on cover two. The corner stays and protects the underneath hitch, and the safety usually can't get to the receiver running a corner in time. All right, Cormel, I appreciate the question. I'm not sure I love smashes in the cover two as much as you do. I think I don't want to bash on the corners you played, but the corners you played don't sound very good. Most times if you play a corner worth anything, they're playing cover two. They're going to kind of give you that hitch or, or bait you into thinking that you have that hitch and come up and smash that hitch because that's their responsibility in the flat. Or they're going to bait you into throwing that corner meaning that they're going to come down on the hitch the whole time with their hips open, ready to anticipate and get that corner throw if you throw it too flat. So yeah, is it tough on the safety to come out there and cover a corner? Absolutely. It's that corner's job on defense to kind of feather between those two and really take away the corner and drive and tackle that hitch. And so can you get it sometimes? Sure. Especially if the safety's misaligned or way inside that corner out and this that corner's way up on the hitch. Absolutely. It's an easy throw. But again, you play a corner who can feather the thing and kind of play in between those two or bait you into thinking that they're coming down on the hitch and go get that corner or vice versa, bait you into thinking that they're off and play in that corner and come down and drive that hitch. You're either going to put the hammer on that wide receiver or they're going to take that hitch to the house the other way. So I don't love it as much as you love it. Excuse me on the voice. I don't love it as much as you love it. But are there opportunities to throw it sometimes? Sure. You know, can you get it? I think that there are different ways to take advantage of it. I personally liked more of a spot concept. So what I mean by that is if a if a smash concept is just a hitch and a corner, a spot is more of a hitch kind of that goes onto the track or over the number where the number two is. And then the corner. So you get a little bit more space, a little bit wider space as opposed to hitch corner. You get that spot corner creates a little bit more space, makes that corner decide exactly what he needs to do. You can also run an arrow with those things with the corner first cover two or like our little return route to take advantage and pull that corner a little bit harder so they can't sit there and kind of feather you and make you think that you have something when you really don't and so i've heard that called different routes before whether it's a steak dinner throw meaning if the corner if the quarter quarterback throws that corner and that corner takes it and picks it off he's got to buy the quarterback room a steak dinner the little things like that it's not as much as a, a guarantee as i think you you might have experienced it with it so I appreciate the question. Thanks. Next question, Brandon Chang. Hey, JT, I love your videos. Can you break down various pass protection schemes and when or how to make protection adjustments pre-snap? Yes, Brandon, good idea. Again, some of these questions are a little tough because we all just don't play in the same offense. And so different offenses will have different rules and adjustments about how you kind of do pass protection, what they believe in, where they spend their time, you know, what, what, where are they trying to throw hot or side adjust, or do they do redirects? And so it's difficult to kind of do breakdowns like that. The other thing is, is that it's just, it's hard to find kind of verbiage that everybody understands because every offense is going to be a little bit different. I think most offenses use either slide or solid protection, meaning that the offense is usually offensive line is sliding to one linebacker or one side and kind of a man zone area concept and or they're doing a solid protection where it's the four if you're playing an even front the four down lineman and the mic and then you usually have a back and tight ends to kind of block the other linebackers and so what that looks like as far as declaration how they do it by their rules are really hard to talk in universal terms sure you can do it but i mean you're getting into the weeds of crazy jargon and so i tried to do it actually put a video out on six man slide protection on the for the patreon community if it's something that the patreon community wants to see more of i can probably make it happen it just gets really into the weeds and as far as and the other thing about it is this isn't called o-line school you know i think that there's an element of quarterbacks that they need to know pass protection where they're hot but i think you can kind of get kind of analysis by paralysis if you start worrying about individual matchups who's sliding where what exactly that looks like and from a coaching standpoint obviously very important but from a playing standpoint from a quarterback standpoint i think if you know where you're hot if you know where the line's going to you're good to go you can play really fast so i appreciate the question next question double up this guy brought up a few times daniel hey can you please explain cover six and combo coverages in the next q a please or John, hey JT, can you talk about the other zone coverages, cover six? 
So maybe it's my ignorance, but I'm not used to calling it cover six. I've heard it called cover six before. I didn't didn't necessarily think it was a universally understood term uh, to be called cover six. And I think what people mean when they say cover six is just quarter, quarter, half or half quarter, quarter, depending on where they do the half side. And so to me, the cover six or quarter, quarter, half is just a, it's a variation of quarters. And what I mean by that is very rarely will a team say, in in my opinion, at least, well, and I should say it varies by stages because quarter, quarter, half is not a great defense to play in the NFL usually because the hashes are a lot tighter. So you have to play the half field is a lot wider. Where in college or high school, you see it a lot more often because the hashes are so wide, it's a lot easier to play cloud coverage or half field coverage to the boundary or short side because you want that rolled up corner for run force and you can have that over the field player play half of a field when it's a tight or the short side with the hash. And so it's a lot harder in the league to get away. You almost never see just straight up quarter, quarter, half. And so there are a lot more combo coverages in the league. And I think combo coverages, I mean, we could, we could have a whole book on this type of stuff where is it combo coverage, meaning different variations of zone coverage? Are we doing like, you know, is it man zone or is it man underneath? Is it man on one side? Is it a du Are you doubling a star? You know, oftentimes I'm used to, I remember playing like the Patriots were famous for a long time for what most teams would call double the stars, meaning it would look like two man or quarters, but really it's a variation of zero with, they would put two guys, the safety and whoever's there, they, they determine they're really good player on both sides to kind of be double covered. And it would look like two man or quarters, but really it's double the stars, meaning that they can double whoever they want and change whether it's the number one receiver, the, the outside receiver, the inside receiver, the in the third receiver, depending on who they think the best player is. And so those type of combo coverages, I think, are a lot harder to deal with. You really only see those at the highest levels. But again, cover six or quarter, quarter, half, to me, those are just variations of quarters. I don't really think of them as different than, than anything else. Yes, you know, I think once you, if you know you're playing a quarter, quarter, half team, you can dial up quarters plays to the field and half and, you know, cloud coverage plays to the boundary. But I mean, in reality, and the other part about this is, and this is just my experience with it, is a lot of quarter, quarter, half teams are just quarters teams that make their calls for a half field player based on the splits of the wide receivers. So they don't go out there and say, hey, uh, we're going to run cover six. They run out there and say, hey, we're playing our quarters matchup coverage based on the split of the wide receiver. This is the coverage we're going to play. So it, it's all based on if you have a really wide split, it's hard to play a cloud coverage. If you have a tight split, it's a lot easier to play a cloud or rolled up coverage. And so it depends on the splits. So you really can't predetermine, you know, if you're watching film of an opponent, oh, these guys are quarter, quarter, half. Well, they line up in, you know, we line up in squeeze formations or tight formations every play. Well, we might get covered too because they might, their rules might say, hey, we want to play cloud corners versus squeeze formations versus we're not going to play quarters against this type of stuff. And so those type of variations to me, that's why I, I just kind of lump them together as quarter, quarter halves. It's a quarters team. You know, they're just a quarters team, depending on what they play, that one team might be a little bit more fluid, be able to get into half field coverages other than than most. But again, quarter, quarter, half, it's just quarters. If you have a quarters read to the half field side, obviously there's some variation to it. But usually that inside wide receiver on a quarters play works just the same as versus cloud coverage or a half field coverage. So it, to me, it was never that big of a deal. I think it varies a little bit in the run game as far as who you block out there on the perimeter or if you're doing RPO stuff, throwing screens, it's, it sometimes matters. But again, it's middle field open. It's quarters to the field every single time. You know, those type of things. The consistency is what you're looking for from the quarterback position so you can play really fast, identify it, middle field open, zone coverage, let's roll, that type of stuff. So thank you. Appreciate the question. Next question, Nick S. Can you please start a series of episodes like this one on pass concepts that you really goes into the depth of each defensive scheme. So I think I did zone coverages on one and I, and I, and I like doing it. I, th I think that there is some opportunity to go into some nuance and some depth about each zone coverage, specifically not zone coverage, but defensive scheme to help quarterbacks be able to identify it and play it faster. And I think it's a great idea, Nick. And I think I will get into it. I think those videos take a little bit more time 
to kind of rally out. And so I want to make sure that I do them well and that they can kind of stand the test of time that makes sense and people learn from them, enjoy them. So it's a great idea. I think I probably will end up doing it just because I got 39 likes. So a good indicator that the audience of this channel wants to see more information like that. So I love it. I appreciate good ideas like that. I will get to it as quickly as I can. Again, I appreciate the feedback. Keep it coming. These things are a lot of fun for me to go back and forth, especially with people who love ball and have really good, thoughtful, you know, well-intentioned questions. So thank you so much for the support of the channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe right there. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. See you next time.